Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I am a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this week's screencast, we are going to use a Tidy Tuesday data set on um, the gender pay gap. So, um, how uh, how much more do men earn doing the same kind of jobs at the same companies ca compared to women? This data set specifically is from the UK, uh, so it's companies and organizations in the United Kingdom, and it has um, you know, information about what kind of work is done, um, uh, you know, how the quartiles are in pay and all that type of thing. What I specifically want to look at is um, the specific kinds of economic activities and what, what the difference in pay gap is across different kinds of, you know, jobs, different kinds of like positions that people have. Let's jump in. All right, let's get started. This week's Tidy Tuesday data set, which I'm going to load here, is um, is from uh, the UK, and it is data on the individual organization level um, in individual like reporting periods, and we have the employer name you know, where it is, company number, these things called SIC codes that I'm going to work, um, we're going to talk about a little bit more. And then information on um, the, the pay gap in that company. Um, so if we, for example, say select um, contains that, let's look at those quartiles. So in this company, um, what percent of the quartile is um, uh, women, women and men? So here, the lower quartile is 75% women, 25% men. So those quartiles, you know, like that depends on um, uh, how many women are at the company overall, like whether there is a whether there is a difference. So the 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 um, variable here that actually looks at the difference between what men are paid or women are paid are are these. The let's let's select those. So take a look at them. So we've got these differences here. So when it's positive, so this is the hourly rate, the mean, the median, and then the bonus bonus, mean, median, bonus. So when it's positive, that means there's a gender pay cap in the way we usually, ex, you know, understand it with women being paid less than men. Um, so here the mean is lower than the median in this particular organization. Um, and when, so when it's negative here, that means that women are paid more in that organization um, on an hourly basis. It looks like they also have more, um, bonus in that particular organization. So that's how this data is structured. What I would like to do is look at those SIC codes like this. So these are um, really interesting. So I I am on the, um, the Technical Advisory Committee for the Bureau of Labor Statistics here in the US. And these kinds of codes are, are super interesting to me. So these are UK codes, not US codes. Um, and and e each of these codes corresponds to a, um, like a kind of economic activity, um, like a kind of job effectively. SIC stands for Standard Industrial Classification um, of, you know, jobs or econo uh, economic activities or whatever. Um, I, so notice, notice something here. This company has one SIC, SIC code, and you know, these all have one. This one has two. This one has three. So these different companies, um, these different companies are involved in different kinds of SIC codes. So um, there's a really nice function in, um, let's just look at the SIC codes like this. There's a really nice function from TidyR called separate roads that is made for this kind of data right here. So if we say separate equals that colon that they're separated with, now notice they are all on their own rows, like more in a tidy data format. And so then, you know, we could do something like count the codes like so. We can say, well, let's see what the most common ones are. So one, which, you know, like that's probably nothing, right? Or whatever. Um, NA, um, we have some missing data there. But then we see here are these most common codes. 
Um, so when I was doing a little bit of prep for this video, I looked up where can I find out what those co codes are because they're not in the original data set. And um, I found where the UK government has their official, you know, in their official statistics, here are what the codes are. So I am going to um, open this CSV up that I, that I downloaded from the UK, you know, official statistics website. And we can see here, um, these are all, the, these, you know, these ones up at the top are all about farming. They're all about growing different kinds of crops. And, you know, like we can, let me just show you what some of these look like. Um, if we sample, let's just look at like 10 of them here. So manufacturing, property management, retail sale, wholesale of musical instruments. <laughs> you know, so you can imagine some of these are very common. Some of these are not common. Um, so what I would like to do in this um, in this screencast is walk through how to take these codes how, and how to look at what aspects of these um, these kinds of jobs, these kinds of economic activities, um, how they are related to different kinds of um, uh, to different levels of of pay gap here. So uh, let me. Uh, you know, get this ready here. And then uh, what we're going to do is, as you can see here, we're going to take three different approaches. And then these three approaches walk through um, different ways to look at this question. How are the uh, economic activities uh, related to the gender pay gap? So let us, um, you know, before I do that, maybe I should look at the pay gap and see how it's distributed. Let's look at that median there, the median hourly, the, the median difference in hourly pay. And let's look at, just see how it's distributed here. All right, so you can see the, so it's a percent that is um, actually, it's not out of one, like it's out, out of a hundred, which I think I'm gonna change that because I'll be able to do that better. Um, whoa, what am I doing? Continuous. And let's get let's let's go in there. What if we do like from 50% to 50%? Is that what oh that's pretty interesting. And let's, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like this so we can really treat it like a percent, be more clear that it is a percent. And let's say labels. So we can use a scales, this this percent function from scales to make a nice um, a nice label. So what we have here, ah, so it's kind of interesting. So we have a, you know, there's a lot more companies on the positive side than the negative side, and the kind of shape is interesting. The way that it, um, the way that it uh, is distributed. Anyway, that's kind of an interesting distribution. Um, we definitely see that it's, you know, more on the positive side here. So this is this um, outcome, this um, percent di median difference in the hourly pay. This is this is what we're going to do. And then what we're going to do is connect it to these codes that we have here. So let's start um, joining this up. So let's make something called pay gap joined like this and let us take the raw data. Let's just take um, the name so I can kind of look in case, I don't know. Will I, I don't know, will I use that? I'm not sure. Um, the difference in the hourly pay and those codes like that. Whoops, let's not assign it yet. So like this, and then we can, um, let's do that thing that I, showed earlier where we separate the rows. All right, so now our rows are all separated. So notice now we have some companies um, are in here more than one time um, because they have more than one SIC code. <clears throat> and now let's join with those codes that tell me what they are. Um, so they're called, it's called an ever so slightly different thing. Um, it's codes here. It's code there, code. All right. Um, and now we've got it. Okay. 
There we go. That's what we want. So let's call this pay gap joined like so. Whoops. Okay. Great, so this looks pretty good. We've now joined it up. Now, um, there are many different unique um, SIC codes. Let's see how, exactly how many. 611, including NA, so many, right? And um, I'm gonna say that is, you know, that is probably too many for be able to build some kind of model from. And there's also overlap here, right? Like. This one's about education, this one's about education. Um, you know, we've got overlap here. So what I would like to do is I would like to treat that like text. It's not really normal, natural text, but I can tokenize it and um, treat it like it is a, um, a text data set. So let's take that joined data set, let's unnest the token. So this is what, um, will uh, convert this to a tidy data frame with text. Let's say word, so we're unnesting into word from the description there. So now we have, notice this is one, now one row per word. Let's, um, we've got words like, you know, I'm not really interested in stop words here. So let's um, take out the stop words. So I'll, um, I'll get rid of the stop words here. And then, um, you know, I'm going to do NA omit just like that to get rid of things that, you know, we, we had a fair amount where either it wasn't in the data set, so the join didn't work, or they maybe, you know, I think they were NA to start with or something like that. So let's do this pay gap tokenized. Here we go. All right. Okay. Great, so now this is how many rows we have. And um, so what are we gonna do next? So this is still a ton of words. So let's take that tokenized data set. Let's count the words like this. And um, let's take the, that activities word is kind of boring. And so as um, NEC, that was like, um, Where'd it go? Other surface activities, not otherwise, you know, like not not already, like that's just really like we not not specific. That's not specific. So let's um let's filter out a few of these really boring words. So not word in activities in EC like that. I don't know, general, that one's still pretty boring too. The rest of those seem fairly meaningful. Um, and so let's now, let's now take the top words by N. So the most common, you know, we could say, we could take like the top 20 words and then we can pull word like that. Whoops, like this. So if we take the top 20 words, that is, um, Pretty interesting. Let's take out non. Let's go to 30. I think we could do 30. That looks pretty interesting. I wonder, 40, we could probably do 40. Cause it's, I mean, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do, let's do 40. I like that. So let's call this the top words. So these are the words we're gonna include in our analysis. We're not gonna include all the other words that are used less often. So let's take the tokenized data set. Let's filter that word is in, oh my goodness, top words. And okay, so let's see what that looks like. Good. Um, and now let's, um, you know, let's do that thing with, with uh, let's change this value here. So let's call it diff, no. Uh, fine, we'll just do the whole thing. Diff wage. There, like that. And word. Like so. Yeah, okay. And so we'll have just a, 
I, cause you know what? I'm not going to use the employer name. We're just going to look at the words and the difference in the wage. All right. So let's call this pay gap. Like so. All right, so now we have this data set where we know for every word describing the standard industrial classification of the, that, that economic activity, for every word and, you know, every company that's in this data set, what is the median difference in hourly wage? And so what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through three ways to look at this data set, at these differences, and understand what economic activities have, a, you know, a higher or lower, um, a higher or lower uh, uh, pay gap, gender pay gap. Okay, so first, the first approach we're going to take is, um, to, is, per, is perhaps unsurprisingly the simplest, and that is just to summarize and visualize. So we are, let's group by word, and let's summarize the diff wage is the, you know, the mean diff wage, like this. There we go. And we can, you know, we can ar arrange this in some way. Um, let's, let's actually make this a factor. Let's make this a factor um, so that um, we're going to reorder the word by the diff, um, the diff wage here. Um, and then let's put that into a plot. So we're going to say diff wage on the x-axis, um, word on the y-axis, did I get that right? I don't need two AESs. What on earth am I doing? All right, there we go. And let's, you know, I mean, I just might put a point there. Let's just put a point, a biggish point. And let's not make them black. Let's make them nice and blue. Okay. All right. So the reason why these are in order is because I did that business with the factor there. Um, if we want to take a look at that. And so what we see is that we have the biggest difference in wage for these words like primary, secondary, education, and then construction, technology, information. So these are the economic activities where women, where men earn the most compared to women, where women earn the least compared to men. Down here, which is actually getting close to zero, we have um, words that... Um, that are have very small difference. So residential care, health, social facilities. And here we see um, small differences between what the wage earned by men and the wage earned by women. Let's um, just change this to be more clear. So this is the percent increase in men's hourly wage as compared to women's. The percent increase, it's the, it is the pay gap. So yes, the, it's the difference, the percent, let, let's say increase because the fact that it's positive, it, it, like that makes it clear. Also notice it's interesting at the individual organization level, um, we saw plenty of organizations where the, the, um, the difference was negative, i.e. women made more, but when you aggregate over many, over many, um, organizations, then all the differences are positive. Men weren't earn more than women uh, in the aggregate at all, in all um, economic activities. Okay, so this is take number one. Summarize, visualize. I think super effective, um, super straightforward, right? Like we understand exactly what happened here. Let's now go to take two. So in take two, we are going to fit um, one single linear model. Um, very, it's going to be a very straightforward one. So let's, let's give it a name. Um, pay gap fit like this. And we're going to, um, predict that diff wage by the word and the data. We're just going to, you know, fit it all the data at once here and we can do summary. We can do tidy like this. Um, okay, so we've got, okay, so this is pretty interesting. We see um, the p-value is very high for some of these. Um, oh, also, uh, okay, you know what? I'm going to make the formula slightly different because what 
what does this mean? It's relative to some intercept, and it will be it will be simpler. It will be more interpretable in this case to force the intercept to zero. Well, after I force the intercept to zero, the this is now um, that the, the coefficient from the linear model is now um, the 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 what the model says is the pay gender pay gap for that for that um for that word so the in business the gender pay gap is you know 14 15% 14 in the word construction it is almost 20% and so forth so by using this zero as the intercept it makes these a little more interpretable all right, so that fits super fast. You know, this is this is ordinary, uh, you know, least squares, very, very like, um, you know, this statistics you, you know, you might learn in like your first semester of studying statistics. Um, how might we want to, um, how might we want to um, uh, show people how to use that? So we could tidy this fit. And then we get it in a data frame that we can summarize, we can visualize, we can, um, you know, we can, for example, look at the the words that have the highest, or this is the lowest, sorry, the the, the ones that have the highest gender pay cap. So yeah, we have the highest pay gap in the model, like in education and construction technology. Um, but we can also, and we can make a plot from scratch here. Um, I like the dot whisker package for some of this because it, has a nice um has a nice uh pay gap um kind of default plot that you also can um uh customize so let's just first look at the very very default plot like so so it gives um it's kind of it's in look it's in alphabetical order you know that's maybe not so useful for me right now. So let's um let's make some changes here. Let's say term. Let's remove um from term. Let's remove word. So so now that'll make that. I oh not words, word. There we go. Okay, that's better. Let's make it a factor just like we did here. So it'll be not in alphabetical order, but in, um, uh, whoops, term, term. Whoops, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? Right, right, right. So it's, um, it's now it's estimate, because it's coming from the model. Am I doing this totally wrong? Oh, right, let me, let me look. So in this... Um, it's this vars order like that. So let's let's start let's start customizing here. We can say vars order, and we can say like the levels of what's getting passed in term like that. Uh, let's let's make it go the other way. So it's more like the other plot we made. Nice. Um, there's other there's other things we can customize in here if we want to make it you know blue like the other thing that. The other one we made, we can do that, like like the dot args, whisker args, whisker args, excuse me. Um, so we can do things like um, like dot. So dot args. Let's make them bigger. Let's make let's. We can pass in um, aesthetics here from ggplot2. Uh, this is probably yeah, seems fine. Let's make it. I should, I've signed that to a variable, so I'm not typing it <laughs> over and over um, like that. So does this look good? Let's see, do we like this? I like that pretty well. And let's, um, we can also, you know, since this is just a ggplot, not, uh, it is a ggplot object, we can add things like this. And, oh yeah, let's do, um, what we did here with the, this, except I'm not, I'm going to take those, the limits off. I should have done this on the other plot too. Like that. 
Nice. Okay. So here, so the first plot that we looked at with just the dot with just the dots on it, that was literally just summarizing and then plotting those points onto our plot. Here, this is we we fit one linear model and then we got our um, our information out from it. And we see, you know, you know, like similar kind of thing here. The um, we have things about education, they have the highest pay gap, construction technology, things like service, jobs, manufacturing, they have medium pay gaps, and things like working in ca residential care and social services, etc. Those have the lowest pay gap. So that's kind of the same thing. Now we have error bars, which is, um, which is good for us to understand. We could also, you know, um, filter out things that have um, p values that are too big. You know, we could say something like filter p value, p dot value, um, make sure it's, you know, less than 0.05 or something like that. And we can, you know, uh, only, only get the ones that have a certain, you know, are in a th certain threshold or something like that. So we've gained more information. We moved up. We've used something a little more sophisticated than just summarization, and we're able to get information out. All right, let's move to our third and final approach to this, and that is not to fit, to fit one model, but to fit many, many, many models. So we are going to load the R sample package from Tidy Models, and we are going to use a function that is called... Um, Reg, reg intervals, so regression intervals here. And so what it does is it will um, take these kind of like a parametric model like this one and it will fit it many times, many times. So how many times? Um, like a thousand or two thousand times to get these kind of um, these kinds of uh, results. So let's um, let's set this up. So we're gonna say reg intervals, regression intervals, and you know what? I don't think I even need to do that. So we're gonna give this that just we pass exactly the same thing as to LM like that, and let's call this pay gap intervals int intervals intervals longer better so not just one fit but uh but a thousand a thousand i could um it does student t for the um the default so let's just do that so let's um let's start this so this is if you remember this data is pretty big <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really big. Um, and I'm going to kick this off. And so what it's doing is it is fitting to that um, 100,000 row data frame a thousand times. So, you know, one one fit happened in the time I, you know, like I couldn't even really tell, like that it was doing something. It happened so fast. But when I need to do that a thousand times, it actually is going to take a moment. So I'm going to pause the video here and then um, come back on when it is done. All right, I that actually wasn't very long. I probably could have just left that going. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, so we see what is what the output of this is. So for so this model was fit a thousand times um, to bootstrap resamples of my our original data set, and then what we have here are the are the bootstrap intervals um, for these um, words, for the, like, what is the pay gap for each of these words? Um, we now have bootstrap intervals for it. So we can, again, we have a lot of options that it comes from when we're going to, um, we are going to visualize this. But let me start with this. And oh, we don't really have p-value anymore, but we do have these bootstrap intervals, which are perhaps better, um, and instead of, it's called dot estimate now, term dot estimate, like this. Okay, so let us make our last visualization of the screencast. So um, I am going to, it's going to be very similar to the top one. I'm going to put um, Estimate on the x-axis, term on the y-axis, and then let's use, you know, I've been really feeling crossbars lately. Like, I'm like, they're so cute. I love them. <laughs> so let's do this. So the for the aesthetic for this, we have to put um, the lower, the upper, upper, 
And you know what? We've been everything's been consistent so far. More midnight blue. And I don't know if that has alpha actually. Um, and you know what? I just need the same the same stuff because it's all very very similar. I'm just using different kind of aesthetics here. So now this is going to be this is our final one. So let's zoom in so we can see here again. You know, like no real shock, right? Like we see. We see the um, the same kind of pattern where um, you know we've got education up at the top where men earn much more than women. Construction, technology, information, technical management like these are where men earn a lot more than women. And then down here in the healthcare, residential, social services, men and women don't earn as different in terms of their hourly wage. We see, like, see how some of these are so big because we um, cannot estimate the pay gap for the word services as well as we can for some of these other ones, like say education, where we could estimate it really well. Um, human, like human resource, again, is like larger. So so we did it three ways. It seems like, oh, we got the same answer all three ways, which is which is good, you know, you know, but um also it's kind of an interesting question. So um these scaled up not only in um, complexity, but also in robustness. So bootstrap um, intervals are going to be um, robust to a lot of the kinds of assumptions of um, of OLS. Like the, the intervals that you get are not going to be as affected as if your data does not um, fit the the assumptions of OLS as when we looked at the intervals from, you know, just one fit linear model. So that could be great if that's what your priority is. The, um, the just straight up, you know, dot plot where I just summarized and visualized that um, – that also it showed us the same thing and you know there's a lot of situations where that can work as well all right we did it we took this data on the gender pay gap in the uk and we used three different approaches to look at the relationship between um what kind of work people do and how much of a pay gap there is between men and women we first we just did uh you know summarization and visualization um, we fit one simple model, one, one linear model, and then we fit a thousand models to find bootstrap um, uh, uh, intervals for, for those. These three, re these three approaches, you know, showed us the same kinds of relationships, like very, very similar relationships. And um, they're, they're good options in different kinds of situations, depending on, you know, how important is it that your intervals are right? How important is it that it's very easy to explain what it is that you've done? Uh, I thought this was a really uh, nice data set to be able to walk through how different approaches um, work and how they can be uh, appropriate in different situations. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.